Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about Marvel's Eternals. This was a movie I was not really excited about or sort of on the radar as one of the MCU movies that were going to continue this, you know, 10, 20 year story. I will say off the bat that there's a lot to enjoy about the movie. And I'll say that it was an enjoyable ride for me, but there's a lot of little nitpicks and a lot of things that make me say it's not a great movie. So it's directed by Chloe Zhao. Story by Ryan Fippo, Kaz something. And it stars... Gemma Chan, Richard Madden, Kumal Nanjani. I mean, you just don't know who's in this movie, but when you start seeing Salma Hayek, Angelina Jolie, even the two guys from Game of Thrones, you, you sort of recognize it, but it sort of lends, for me, a little bit of wasted opportunity because... I'm just fascinated with Angelina Jolie on screen. Salma Hayek. It meanders too much. It wants to do a huge timepiece over time. And I think all the elements don't have enough weight. And I don't feel it enough. They've got a sort of a love triangle going. You've got ancient beings. They're old. They're in the current world and you've got some flashbacks to prior it all just doesn't work for me like every puzzle piece didn't come together and it was amazing but that doesn't mean the movie's bad at all now going through the looking at all the people in this movie there's a lot of people there's a lot going on and at times it's beautiful to watch there's even character interactions, some are just really good. They feel right when you want to mix a little comedy in. But, you know, it doesn't feel real Marvel Cinematic Universe to me. And even if they made a reference or two to what's going on, it doesn't feel big enough. And when one of the uh, characters is actually... Well, I guess it's the leader, Salma Hayek, or maybe it's her. Well, uh, that changes, but... Um, I don't know, it's just, it's just... She makes reference of Thanos snapping his finger, and uh, the people of this planet brought it back, but it doesn't feel like it had substance. It doesn't feel like it was connected in a purposeful way. It feels like dialogue added to... I don't know, just cover their bases it didn't feel real effort was put into it now you look at something like uh hawkeye is the uh disney whatever tv show right off the bat it puts you in the movie uh the first avengers movie and a flashback type thing and, I, and i'm caught up and my breath is taken and i'm you know just had so many opportunities to do that and I think when I look at the movie as a whole, yes, it's a decent movie in that way. I did some, some of these characters I really want to know more about. And I'll say the most lacking thing is Makarai, or however they're pronouncing it. I was really fascinated with the not speaking sign language and then her speed, but it's just not used. Uh, you had so much, so many places to go with Angelina Jolie's Thena, and it just feels like it never paid off. The love triangle thing seems to just be there for certain purposes, but because of the way the movie's edited and it flows, it doesn't, I don't know, it's, maybe it was Marvel's way of trying to set a new trend with a new slice of the universe, See, this doesn't feel like a MCU movie the way, I'm going to say, like Ant-Man or Guardians did. 
and Ant Man might be closer to the ground, the source material, meaning he's around and the Guardians are in space. But they felt a connection. They still felt a. This doesn't feel like it's in this umbrella. Now, maybe that's a good thing for the movie. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm watching the movie, turning the mic on. You know, things are shooting through my brain. I'm not analyzing it and, you know, rigorously going through it. But I know that there's missed opportunities here. There's a lot you can explore that you could have done maybe a little more fine-tuned. And I would have been really into it. And there are times I'm in that mood. I'm, I'm really immersed. But I find that it doesn't last long. Yeah, I don't find it sustained enough for me to rave about the movie. That's really, I get it. in a nutshell what it is. It's definitely an enjoyable movie. I got through it. I was enjoying watching some of the things happen. It feels a little too generic bad guy type thing and they tried to do a twist on that and that didn't work for me either i was kind of wondering where it was going in a sense but part of it was in my mind was the subplot that was revealed and there's so many iterations in the comics that you can go to again i'm a big comic book geek if you've anybody's listened to any one of these you know 50 years old i've collected comics for most of my life up until about 2010 ish and I try to keep online stuff, you know, going. But in a nutshell, I'm not the big geek no more. But these are just childhood joy for me, most of these movies. And this is one of them in that way. Like, oh, I get to see the Eternals. Uh, I get to see a kid on the screen telling, oh, that's Superman. Meanwhile, I'm like, one of my complaints about the trailer was he should have blonde hair. It should be very blonde, Icarus and definitely get him away from that Superman look. But in the end, it worked for me. It didn't really bother me too much. But again, you have so many pieces. You got a long movie, right? How long is this movie? It's, it's, it's 156 minutes. That's a long movie to have these pieces that don't come together in an amazing way. And maybe that's, you know, my expectations of an Eternals movie. But you're dealing with cosmically powered beings from another planet who come and they're protecting us from the deviants. And there's a whole subplot with that, little twisty twisties and reveals. It was okay. Uh, not that someone who, like me, who is a dungeon master, a game master, you, you sort of see the threads of possibility made where it might lead. And there are iterations in the comics that they're drawing from, so you, you got an idea. And in this one, okay, I'm okay with where they went. And where they're going might be even interesting to me. It's just they focused on just, I think, the wrong elements. And maybe it is it is a new age for people. Um, you know, you didn't want to see Angelina Jolie and Summer Hayek as frontrunners of the movie. But I did. <laughs> I really did, and it didn't. It wasn't enough for me. And what they did with uh, I don't know how to say it, uh, Kit Harrington was I thought subdued enough because obviously I know Dane, you know, and that whole thing he's involved in. And at the end, there's a little teaser for it. But I thought you could have even done that a little better. So. Missed opportunities in a large-scale movie like this. The villain didn't seem important enough. The twist is supposed to be, which is fine, because you're dealing with celestials or whatever the fuck they're pronouncing. Crazy cosmic craziness. To see uh, an attempted unit mind was awesome. And it execution is what kind of fails, and it's not... That it doesn't look good. Like, most of the stuff looks really good. I'll give a little bit of the CGI stuff was a little, eh. It's going to be something I watch again, that's for sure. I will definitely, you know, give it another go through and 
try to see if uh you know things going on in your life the day you woke up how you feel what's going on is impacting things and look at it again but i'm gonna say right now it's a good movie just meanders a little too much and then when it hits the points it's supposed to they don't feel weighted enough and meaningful enough it feels almost they're there just to check the boxes off I would have loved to see more of Angelina Jolie and Sama Hayek in the movie doing real stuff and Makarai, one of my favorite Eternals his run with Quasar in the comic books the best friends, they became roommates is heartfelt to me it, and I don't care if they changed it into a woman I don't care if they're making it in uh, inter-romantic things I didn't care but the character's not there some of these people aren't there. They come in later and you're wondering why is this impactful now and then something's going to come into play. It just... I don't know. I would have liked to have seen or felt more immersed, more in wonder at the Eternals. I mean... You know, um... Uh, it's not about a crime syndicate and some villains and weird costumes you know you watched i watched the spider-man this is beings who are protecting our planet from a threat that they thought was eradicated but it wasn't right and then there's the twisty twisties and the reveals and they don't come at the right beats i think and i think that makes a big impact on me like where you were the previous setup was carrying me it just kind of fell a little flat but watching some of the scenes, it's beautiful. Um, seeing the, uh, they're awesome characters. They like you can tell they love what they're doing and they are happy to be here, which is kind of weird. But uh, let's say, uh, who's the guy who plays fucking John McClane in the Die Hard movies? You know, Bruce Willis. He's fucking mailing it in every B movie he does, and it just doesn't feel right. And I almost expect that from someone here, maybe even a Salma Hayek or Angelina Jolie. But no, they seem to be vibrant on the screen. And even in a subdued manner, well, I guess maybe that's the allure of someone like Angelina Jolie. You put her in there and she feels like the one in charge, which is why I don't know why she wasn't Cersei, by the way. In the comics, it's it's almost like always been depicted that Cersei was like Angelina Jolie in that way and maybe it's that also that magic she brings as an actress that she's so commanding she is so whatever that you have to make her Athena like it wouldn't have made sense right and then in that case she nails it I mean I give no fucks really about Icarus and that story they put on I would have liked them to go a different way Makarai is just not there enough for me. And it's what's going on with uh, Athena. Because they gave Athena Cersei's mind sickness. It's just, it's just a little weird, but okay. You know, I, whatever. This is comic book nerd stuff, but Cersei in the comics is affected by the mind thing. And she has to be helped or tried to be cured because you can't cure it. So they were taking some things here and there. And they made a pretty good excuse in the in this comic. I'm not sure if the run I read, because there's so many. you got to imagine the Eternals, they come out, they go. They're guesting in this, there's different writers. So I'm not sure what iteration they're using. But we're talking about the Eternals, a big, expansive Marvel Cinematic Universe. It has ties in, it mentions things, references things. But I think it falls a little short from being that piece that fits and you're like, wow, like the Doctor Strange way it fit in. Uh, you can go back and look at all the Marvel movies that have happened and even the ones that aren't as money-making or as groundbreaking and they seem to follow the formula. They still have a piece of the puzzle, which is why a lot of people consider it Marvel Cinematic Universe consistently good. Which is an amazing feat. All these movies. No real shit. Garbage. And this is up there. It's good. It's not. But it just doesn't feel like. 
it filled a niche in this Marvel Cinematic Universe that we were looking for. And I think that's the problem. It's not that you're looking for all the guest stars to appear, and me and my friend had this discussion about, oh, where is this person when this happens? Where is that? I find that argument stupid. I mean, you can't have every fucking actor in every movie. And even in the comics, they have their own comics. And when something insane happens, you wonder where the heroes are. But for like a split second, you don't fucking obsess over it. This doesn't feel like you're waiting for them to be there. And it's an option. It feels still cut off and separated. It should have been maybe a grounding there somewhere. I don't know what you could have, you could have used Fury, right? I mean, why did you stop there? You know, someone who has that span of history and we know... Oh, I don't know what the movies will do, but Fury's been the, you know, the one thread connecting a lot of it, and it went back to the Captain Marvel movie. You should have had something like that. And like I said, there were references, and there were actually pretty cool little one-offs here and there, but it's not enough to make me feel like this has carved out a section of the MCU that feels natural. So it's not really a bad thing. I'm just going to say not it didn't wow me. I like the movie. I am actually interested in where it's going. Although I don't know who the fuck showed up at the end playing Star Fox. But it felt like fan service or something. I don't know. I don't know. When you see like fucking Helmsworth doing a Thor cameo at the end, like, you know, it feels like these are your characters, you know, this guy shows up and I'm like, okay. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, they're hinting where it's going. But as a whole, it just doesn't feel like the wow Marvel movie. It feels like a good movie. Story's a little meandering. It's not clunky in that sense. It's some beautiful shots. I love the music. Like, I was in it, in it, into it for the most part. So I'm definitely happy I watched it. Do I recommend it? Yeah, you know. I'll recommend it for that power that some of the characters bring. Even when you're looking at the guy who plays Druig. I don't know who the fuck he is. Some actor, kid. Let me see if I can find his fucking name. But, um... Great actor. And you, you're keeping your eye on him. Like, there, there's, there are performances that are really fucking good. Um... I see, this is what happens when you fucking don't plan. Uh, Sprite was awesome. See, I like Sprite. Fastos got a little annoying here and there. Makarai, you gotta fucking put... Oh, here we go. Barry Kyogen as Druig. Barry Kyogen. He was in Dunkirk. His performance is, is outstanding in this movie. His portrayal of the character is really good. And it has to do with the comics, I know. But this is the fun for me. This is why comic book movies are such a important part of my life in a way, you know. But what I have to realize is I have to separate myself and say, they're trying to make a movie for everybody. So in that, I could see my nitpicks and things being, hey, this isn't what needs to be done like they have to do these things in a certain way and fine if that's what it is so the geek in me is not wowed and it's super cheering impressive but uh the comic book movie love of the eternals like i liked it uh, a little more than i thought i would actors that i thought would confuse me like it kind of works and i'm not totally against what they tried to do here and i think it was pulled off okay so We'll see. Um, so what's his name? Richard Mads Madden. Oh, that's the guy from uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, hmm. In any case, there you go. Talking about Marvel's Eternals. Pretty good movie. 
not the best uh like i said my nitpicks here and there just make me think that it doesn't feel like it is carved out a niche of the mc universe that makes me feel comfortable and familiar and maybe it'll get there maybe it'll take some time and right, i'm interested in where it's going so i hope everybody's doing okay i'll talk to you all next time take care